is globalization dead? Uh, well, both the uh, pandemic and the current war in Ukraine have surfaced once again the question of whether or not we are too interdependent on other countries and whether globalization is a force for good or not. And as we uh, re-examine globalization, we're now thinking more about national security than economic convenience. We're thinking more about uh, who we're doing business with and about what kind of price we can get for our goods. Uh, a situation like this could easily lead to protectionism and closed borders, or it could lead us to more carefully examine our trade and financial structures to, to make them work better and to protect us from the kinds of problems uh, we seem to be experiencing now. But which way will it go? Well, as usual, I examine both possible directions in which it could go. First of all, let's uh, listen to the views of those who say, yes, uh, <laughs> globalization is in big trouble. The war in Ukraine is certainly forcing the issue about the interdependence of companies, uh, countries, and governments. Most of Europe is re-examining energy security. Well, how do you blame them, given what's happened recently? Uh, global travel and medical research brought us a, a pandemic from China. It has caused more damage to the world than anything since the two world wars. Previous epidemics started there too. Let's cut them off and stay safe. They are a supreme example of the problems that globalization brings us. More than ever, we're realizing how important doing business with people you can rely on in countries your government is friendly with is for a nation's health, wealth, and security. And uh, as we see all too often, populist leaders pandle, pander to local employers and pressure groups for great success. Look at Trump. Protectionism is in. That's why globalization is in such trouble. Adjusting ourselves to a safer world is that's going to be tough, but it's essential. Well, what about the other few? What about those that say no? Uh, Globalization isn't in trouble. In fact, it's got a great future. Uh, let's not be so pessimistic and negative about this, about this question. Well, to begin with, companies and countries need each other. Uh, reaching out beyond borders is how they secure, secure supply chains, how they grow their customer bases, how they find labor, skilled and unskilled, and, and, and uh, how they provide the population with all the goods and services they demand at a, a price and at a quality level that they expect. Uh, for, for most businesses, the home market just isn't large enough. Uh, so they need to serve foreign markets. Uh, that means having worldwide sales and distribution structure to reach those markets. That's globalization. Uh, current ship movements uh, bear out the resilience of globalization. A record number of container ships went through the Suez Canal last year. Uh, the same thing in the Panama Canal, and that's even with that crazy evergreen uh, accident in the canal that blocked the canal. The global trade rolls on. Uh, the system is determined to maintain itself. Also, the fundamentals will out. Uh, do the Brits really want to bring back the era of shoddy cars and strike-prone union plants? Remember Red Robo? <laughs> I do. Uh, Americans will remember the thuggish behavior of the United Auto Workers Union in Detroit in their periodic targeting of individual car factories. We don't have that anymore. That's part of globalization's legacy. Uh, for many, the recent disruption, the recent disruption means do better. Uh, digital transformation is taking place, and that will accelerate. It keeps accelerating in all areas anyway, and the pandemic and, and uh, Ukraine is no choice. Autonomous supply chains like robots and warehouses, driverless forklifts and trucks, uh, delivery drones, uh, fully automated planning systems, they're rapidly being developed and implemented. That means that there's a commitment to globalization and globalization will benefit from it. 
international trade theory uh, works and has served as well. It says that countries should produce and export the products they can produce efficiently and import those goods that they produce relatively less efficiently. This kind of trade is beneficial for both countries. That means globalization and prosperity. There are also increasing levels of cooperation among nations to deal with areas other than trade, like climate action, uh, consistency in taxation of large companies, uh, green energy arrangements. These are the areas of uh, globalization that you just can't argue with and, and that are on the upswing. Globalization is the key to world prosperity. It must and will be strengthened. Well, after all of that, uh, those are some impassioned arguments on, on both sides of this very important question. So, in that uh, context, uh, what's my take on it? How do I come out of all this? Well, I, what I have to say is uh, we'll always have populist, protectionist demagogues like Trump, Erdogan, Orban, and Maduro. But it eventually becomes clear that they do more harm than good. Nervousness about economic globalization will simply drive more modernization, improvement, and robustness in world arrangements and links. And at the same time, the benefits of international cooperation in such areas as uh, medical research, taxation alignment, and military opposition to rogue leaders like Putin will be seen to be more essential than ever. Uh, so, globalization, with some updates and improvements, is here to stay. Well, I hope you like that. Uh, and here also are some videos uh, on some similar subjects. Thanks a lot, and subscribe, please.